So today we're talking about the star of gaming. Get it! Anyways, uh, you've just clicked this video about this game, but how do you actually pronounce it? Is it Rystar? Ristar? Or Ristarcrat? Rystar? Ew, that sounds nasty. <laughs> Yo everybody, my name is Caspi, and would you believe me if I said that Sega made other games besides Sonic and Yakuza, which weirdly enough has a series that they still work on? Because I wouldn't. Back in the 90s and early 2000s though, Sega actually made more than Sonic with things like Nights in the Dream, Super Monkey Ball, Choo Choo Rocket, Jet Set Radio, Billy Hatcher, Comic Zone, Streets of Rage, Ultra Beast, Cycle of the Dolphin, Virtual Fighter, The House of the Dead, and the Nightmare of the Dead, oh my god, many! One of those being the game of discussion today, Raystar! Ristar was originally conceived in a contest within Sega in 1990, the year of the Blue Cold Jalapenos. The contest was one where the employees of the company would design their own characters to combat Mario in the growing Oh shit, we need a mascot with quick movement. There was one that looked like Teddy Roosevelt, which actually would eventually become Eggman. And there was a Muppet Bart Simpson, and my favorite, Chicken. It's just a chicken. In these choices, there was a rabbit with extendable ears that was used to pick up things. And actually, this was the original winner. Yeah. This was gonna be the mascot. What? This was actually changed to Mr. Needlemouse, uh, also known as Sonic, due to the fact that the game was supposed to be fast, but also supposed to be about doing stuff that slows the game down. And that's just silly. <clears throat> the rabbit was eventually changed to a star with extendable arms named Jeffrey Rystar. It was actually received pretty well back then, and even nowadays. It's in fact called one of the best platforms on Genesis, or Mega Drive if you're from Europe, like I am. Keyword being one of. That's not one word, you idiot. When you have Sonic 1, 2, 3, and Knuckles <laughs> on the same system, it is a bit odd you'd choose this instead, but hey, I won't, I won't judge the, the, the game for the brand makes it. So, uh, let's get into Patrick Ristar. I like to be playing on the Genesis Classic Collection, because, uh, do you see any Genesis games here? I thought so. Oh god, the Genesis Collection. Why are you so cool, yet so friggin' ugly? It looks so low budget. Whatever, that's not the point of the video. Uh, let's, uh, let's look at the box art. Not bad. Ristar looks like a smug bottle, and the planets and stuff fit him, because, you know, he's just, he's just, he's just, he's just stare. Turn the game on and there's a story apparently. Huh. Well, I didn't play close attention to it last time, so uh, let's do that now. The story is about an evil guy called, get this, greedy. Yeah, actually. I'm gonna guess his deadly sin is Shazam. Wait, no, th that's wrong. Oh, oops. Uh, yeah. So greedy enslaves the population of multiple planets and even defeats their hero who doesn't have a name. Whatever. The people end up begging like an eight-year-old at the supermarket. Hey, mother, can I have some biscuits? No, yeah, big lord of adopted. And thus the son of the unnamed hero, R. The wrist is silent. <laughs> Here's them and have to save them. Now this title screen is good. I like it. It's simple and the logo is pretty good. And just like the cover, I quite enjoy it. Also, the Phantom has a face, and it looks like he has a wraparound mustache and a mouth that goes out of his head and smirking like, Yeah, I know I look dumb my day with it. <laughs> As we literally jump into the game, oh my god! Oh my god! It's a video game! And it's a pretty fun one at that. Wrist has a nice weight to him that does feel heavy, but is fine within the context of the game, and with this level design, it works nicely. Although I will say, he may not have the speed of Sonic, but this is unbearably slow, my god! He moves like he's trying to look cool, but like a brick just fell on his foot, and he doesn't feel so good, so it's just too slow. Slower than Sonic makes sense, but this? This is horrible! Ow, what the hell? Why did that bunny- uh, Why did that bunny come from? What, anyways. Uh, so you control the Starman by using the D-pad or stick and jump with A, and of course stretch your arms like your Reed motherfucking Richards to slingshot yourself into the enemies. That reminds me of something. Oh, buddy. Poor thing. 
You can also climb these ladders, which I struggled with more than I should have, because I'm bad. Furthermore, you can even climb on monkey bars, once again, like an eight-year-old. <laughs> now, I do realize that they wanted you to pick stuff up with the extendo arms, but where is this? Like, sometimes you'll find the most obvious chests hiding some health or maybe a gem that ups your score. But this isn't even a challenge, like, you just... It's there, and you can pick up the stuff. But what? It might be that I didn't explain the levels enough, which honestly I think is fair. But I, I don't know, I don't also don't think so. Even when I did this, really didn't do much for me. It simply isn't a main mechanic, even though I thought it would be. And I, I don't know, I guess I'm just stupid. Just shut up. Now the world themes are kind of cool, sort of. Yeah, you do have generic grass, but you also have ruins with water. Huh. I've never seen that. And also Music World, which is creative as friggity frack. Huh, where have I seen that? The snow level has rice Starbucks, making a snowman if you stand still for too long, and that is just cute. And even the generic grass has those level these glowy trees that make the level bright and dark, and it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty cool in my opinion. The water levels are a bit friggin' abhorrent, though. The swimming controls are straight up. Just, they aren't good. And yes, haha, water levels are bad like in every game, but in general, I don't mind water levels. Lake Kingdom in Mario Odyssey is one of my favorites. I don't hate water levels in Mario games either, like in general. The DKC ones are fine too, but this? This is so bad! You press the A button to dash forward, and you have 8 directional movement to control it, but if you use this dash and you are slightly off from where you want to go, you can't control it mid-dash, and it goes way too far. In my opinion, it's just not very good. You crash into walls constantly. Is that fine? Fine? Okay, good? Fine. Now that we have that established, let's talk about that music. And it's, uh... Yeah, it's, it's good. Nothing too memorable, but serviceable for a video game soundtrack. It sounds very Genesis. Because it's a Genesis game. And the music fits the areas and overall, I enjoyed it. TBH. Oh, and the bosses? They exist. The first level of a world will usually have a mini boss, while the second one doesn't. Why? Is it because you're lazy, or because you feel three bosses per world? Now that's too much, but two on the other hand, that's okay. The third level is also exclusively the boss, and okay, I get it. It's more complicated than the other bosses, but this feels like they went, level design is hard, let's just squirt out a mole rat. The fights themselves, on the other hand, alright, not too bad. To be honest, they work well. I never felt like it was very, as they say, male cow stinky poopy. The zinc one's kind of fun because it has this grid of grabbable poles because you can do that in this game and I forgot to mention that part. Oops. And you have to climb around because, uh, you, you know, you gotta catch them and you know, it's pretty neat. And the final boss was also, you know, something. You just kind of have to try to reach him, but he throws out these balls. Yes, I really wrote a lot. I wrote a lot of L's for some reason. They have to kill before killing him. Overall, I didn't actually beat this game. Yeah, I'm not joking. In fact, they didn't even beat the fourth world. Now you might be thinking, how did you record the footage here? I love you. What? What did you think I meant? Obviously, it's a cheat code that unlocks the level select. I didn't say it because I love you so much, I want to show you guys more of the game. That would be ridiculous. Rice star ridiculous. Ridiculous. goose. Ha! Ah! Now there are more cheat codes, so let's see what there are. Yeah, never mind, none of these are fun. Like a shooting star in the Japanese version exclusively. Invincibility. For the Japan version only. Oh, okay. Ah! Being infinite continues. Oh, this is lame. As standard, I didn't beat this game. Why? Because I died too many times. I'm gonna be honest, I'm bad at this game. And I played it for like two hours total and then got bored and didn't feel like playing anymore. I'm starting to run out of ways to say, Rice Star is too slow for me, the swimming is just bad, the music and art style are passable at best, cheat codes are lame, and bosses are eh. But the game is good, don't get me wrong, I did like it. I can actually use my catchphrase for this one. I can tell it's a good game, I'm just not into it. I usually use that for RPGs, huh? Sadly, never since the first game, Briscard didn't get another major appearance. The only thing was when he held a flag on a racing game once. Well, that sucks. 
He's an interesting character with an interesting mechanic. What can I say? Thank you so much for watching this video. This video was very delayed. <laughs> if you watched my update video, you'll know why there was no video in March. Uh, now, my excuse for why there's no video or why there was only a video this late into April. Um, laziness, I guess. Uh, next video, I'll start working on it, like, immediately after this video, almost. Um, it might not be the next video, but it also might be. It depends. Uh, uh yeah. St comment, like, subscribe. Subscribe especially, you know, there's only, like, 3% of you that's actually subscribed, you know, that's the thing. Yeah. Anyways, bye.